So God happy and I stay all day. I know the storm passing over. chapter 6, starting at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh -huh. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wile of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God uh -huh. that ye may be able to withstand in evil days. Yes, having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawn girdled up about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness uh -huh. and your feet shorn with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watch thereunto with all preservation and supplication to all saints. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we come just to bless your name, Lord God. We come just to worship you. We come just to magnify you, Lord God. We come just to lift you up this morning, Father. Yeah. For we know if we had 10,000 tongues, God, we couldn't thank you enough. Yeah. You said if thou be lifted up, you would do the drawing, O oh God. Yeah. 
So God, right now, we ask that you just draw us closer to thee. Create in us a clean heart, Lord God, and renew a right spirit. Father, some need you for one thing, God, and some need you for another. But Lord, we just need you to stop by here for a little while, Lord. Lord, we pray that you remember the sick, the prison bound. Remember the men's and women's on the battlefield. Lord, remember the ones that's been in bereavement and the ones that's going through. Father, you said in your word that you won't leave us and you won't forsake us. You will be that present help in a time of, of trouble. God, we ask right now that you just order our steps in your word, Lord. Let us know that the weapon formed, but it will not prosper, O oh God. Lord, strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down. Lord, we pray right now, God, that you just bless every family that's represented here today, Lord. And Lord, we know, God, that all things work together for the good of them that love you. You said, eyes have not seen nor ears heard. Neither had it entered into the hearts of man the things that you have in store for us. So, God, right now, we look into you, God, to just give us peace, give us hope. Guide us and direct us, God, in the way that we should go. Lord, we know that you're able to do anything but fail. There is nothing too hard for you. You said if my people were called by your name, they will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You would heal the land. Lord, we need you to heal the land, Lord God. We need you, Lord, to go where we can't go, Lord God. We pray for all the sick members that's in our church. By their side. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are our strong tower, Lord God. And God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for just being God all by yourself. And Lord, we pray for the man of God that you sent here to break the bread of life this morning, Lord God. We pray that you just pour into him and anoint him afresh. Yeah. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, we ask that you hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. All my strength.
my strength. brought me through that
We ask that you buy all, all announcements in mind, and I don't know if there's any September babies this morning or any anniversaries, but we pray that you just pray for our church family, because a lot of our church family is sick, and, and in the absence of our pastor, we give honor to Reverend Sean Curry this morning, who's going to bring, bring us the word, Amen. and we ask that you pray for him, and he's coming from the Rock Church Yarns Grove Church, okay. And after the choir give us a selection, the next voice we will hear will be Reverend Sean Curry. Give him a hand. <laughs> I've been searching for a long time. I knew it was something that I had to find. You should have seen me raising my hands and crying. It's all because I couldn't find peace of mind. But it was the church. When I kneel down to pray, I said, Lord, will you show me the way? I've been searching for a long, long time. I knew something that I had to find. You should have seen me raising my hand. Crying, it was all because I couldn't find that peace. 
streets of mine, but it was then. Oh, I kneeled down to pray. I said, Lord, will you show me the way? Asking you, Lord, I need your help. Lord, show me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, walking in the dark side, but you show me. But it was then I kneeled down to pray. Oh, the hill with you, you show me the way. I've been searching for a long time. Do it was something, something that I had to find. You should have seen me raising my hands and crying, but it all because I couldn't find peace of mind. But it was then everybody and I kneeled down to pray. Oh, I said, Lord, will you show me the I was a rich undone. Show me, show me, show me. Thank you, Jesus, for showing me. Lord, Lord, show. I was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, show me. But it was then I kneeled down to pray. I said, Lord, will you show me the way? Way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Truly, each and every day of our lives, we need. Jesus to show us the way. Amen. We can't make it on this journey by ourselves. Amen. Amen. We have to have somebody to go before us, with us, and after us. Amen. Amen. To let the world know just who we are and who we belong to. Amen. Amen. I greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I count it a blessing and a privilege to be here with you this morning. Amen. Amen. To the deacons, trustees, to the officers and members. I greet you, amen. amen. Hopefully I don't stand before you too long to wear your patience, but I'm gonna do what thus saith the Lord, amen. amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you once more in the name of Jesus, saying thank you for this day and thank you for this opportunity, Father. And in this hour, Father, we ask you to take me out of self and use me for your glory, Father. Let me hear from you, Father, and only you. And speak to your people, Father. Speak to them in a way that only you know what they need, Father. Because when you come through, Father, and you touch hearts and you touch lives, Father, everyone is blessed, Father. You have a way that's a mighty sweet, Father. And no other way, Lord, Father God, is better than yours. These and other blessed acts in your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to come from the text of First Samuel. Amen. 1 Samuel 17th chapter, um, we'll go probably use at the third verse, and then I'm going to work my way through, amen. amen. If I had to use for a topic or a theme, when God gives you favor, amen. amen. When God gives you favor. Yes. Yes. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Perils of 
salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. And the third verse reads, and the Palestine stood on a mountain. And on the one side, the Israel stood on a mountain. And on the other side, there was a valley between them. Amen? We know that when we go through our daily lives, we all going to go through the valley. We're going to have to go through some trials and some tribulations in our lives. But God has told us that he is going to always be with us. And it's up to us to have the courage and have the knowledge to know that he's going to take us through every step of the way. And we got to understand that if we get in front of God, that we're going to lose every time. But God has to go before us. He has to be with us to let his presence be known. Here in the Bible, we see that there was a man named David. Amen. And David was a young son. Amen. And he wasn't even equipped as we thought to go to battle. Amen. Amen. But God can use just who he wants to use, amen, at any given time, amen. But we have to be willing to be used by God. We have to be able to understand that we're not standing for ourselves, but we are standing in the name of our Father, Jesus Christ, amen. And a songwriter once says, uh, giants do fall. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Giants, they die. Amen. It lets us know that we're going to face some things that, that stand in our way. And everything is not going to be small to us that we're going to be able to hurdle over, but there's going to be some true giants that we're going to have to face in our lives. And you may be sitting there wondering, say, what is a giant? Amen. Everybody has something that ails at their lives. Amen. Everybody has, has had a giant that they had to overcome. Amen. In order for you to stand on your feet every morning you, and look at yourself in the mirror, you know that you are blessed by God. Amen. So when you're blessed by God, you know that you have to stand in his favor. Amen. What I mean by standing in God's favor, when God gives you favor, amen, you have favor above everything else, amen, because he is going to be with you. But too often times we as Christians, we want to stand before God. We want to get in his way. We don't want to do the things that makes us small and make him big, amen. amen. So we take a look at this, at this story, amen. We, we see that there was a giant by the name of Goliath. And Goliath was so big and so intimidating that he would stand out in the valley and, and he would say, if you want to fight me, come on. It had got so 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 bad in that time that, that they would say, if you could send one person, or there anybody that can, could, that can defeat Goliath, amen, we, we, you could do it and have everything that we got. But as we take a look and we begin to understand that David was going out to, just to feed Amen. His brothers who was down in, in the wartime. Amen. But as we begin to look and see that we all have that time in our life where we're going to have war. And what do I mean by war? We're going to be going in the storm or coming out of a storm. But thanks be to God, I'm glad to know that I have a Savior by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That when I'm going through the storm, he's going to be with us. Amen. Can I get a witness? Has anybody ever had to go through the storm and know that you had to call on no other name but the name of your father? And at the name of your father, you know that things begin to shift a little bit. And it said it was at that time that when things begin to shift is when we begin to submit ourselves to God. And know that God is always walking with us. Amen. So David just presented himself. Amen. As a living sacrifice for God. Amen. He said, who is this giant? Because I'm not afraid of anyone. Amen. Because I've already defeated a lot of things out here in the wilderness. Amen. So that we know when we're going through life, that there's going to be some things that we're going to have to face. 
things that we that we face in life, amen, that people, amen, when I say people, I mean the world, amen, what looks good to the world, amen, they try to put those things in our minds to let us, to keep us down and keep us bogged down and to not keep the mind of Christ on us or with us or in us, amen, but with God we know that all things are possible, amen, so hey, we, we are the church, amen, and we are the church of the living God, amen, so we got to stand and be who we are to be for God, amen. What are you talking about this morning, preacher? What, did, what does that have to do with fighting a giant, amen? If you're not standing for God, then how can you defeat a giant? That means the world already has you exactly where they want you, amen. The world already has your mind possessed to know that you, you're not standing for God, but you're going to back down when times get hard and when things get rough. You're not going to call on the name of Jesus. You're going to call on the name of something else, amen. And you're going to submit, amen, and, and you're not going to be a giant slayer. Do I have any giant slayers in here today? Do I have any giant slayers in here today? Amen. Knowing that if you didn't slay a giant, if you hadn't slayed a giant, I, I'm, I'm here to let you know that you're going to be faced with something that's going to stand in your way. And I look at the analogy of a giant and I, I begin to understand that, that things are, when things mount up against us and it looks like we don't have no way around it, God told us in some that we have to go through it. How many of you have to go through it today? You know that on the other side of it, amen, it's your blessing, amen. But we don't want to understand, we don't want to go through the valley because we know that we got to turn some things loose, amen. And what are you going to have to turn loose? You're going to have to turn some of those worthy things away, amen. You're going to have to let it free, free from you, amen. We're going to have to be able to stand with God. We're going to have to be able to know that when we're calling on God's name that we're calling on the true giant slayer. When we begin to look and we begin to understand that this world is not our home, amen. We're just strangers passing through, amen. We know that our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness. So we, we understand that we're going to go through some things. We're going to have to go through some things. And it's on the other side of going through is where we receive our blessings. So, so what are you saying today? We have to be obedient to the word of God. 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not boasters. Amen. So God is telling us that when we obey him, we're showing the world that we love him. And out on that cross where God hung his head and died, he showed us all type of love. So I don't want to go to battle with nobody who don't love us enough to die. So God has already given us the foundation to know that if we obey him, if we keep him first, he loves us enough to die on the cross. He's going to love us enough to fight the giant. You understand what I'm saying this morning? It's through God's love, amen, it's through being obedient through the word of God that we'll be able to slay the giant. And we got to have courage, courage to face the giant. Psalms 23 and 4 says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That lets me know in the beginning of this world. When God was called everything into existence, that he knew what he was doing. And he knew that we had to have somebody to stand on our right side. And he knew we was going to have to have somebody to stand on our left side. That when we're standing, we're not standing by ourselves, but we're standing on the word of God. He said in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. So I'm here to let you know that you can use the word to defeat the giants that stand in your life. Amen. I'm talking about anybody that comes up before you, amen, to try to take you down. I stop by to let you know that my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness all of the ground 
out is sick and sad. I stopped by just to let you know that in my life I've had some trials. I've had some tribulations, but I did not waver from the word of God. No matter how it looked on the outside, I knew on the inside that God was making it all right. Can I get a witness today? Has God made some things all right in your life that you had to give him nothing but the honor, glory, and praise? That's why I refuse to sit down on God because I know what God has done for me. I know as God has brought me out. I know I'm not the only one today to know that God has brought you out. When you was faced with a Zion, there was nobody to call on, but you had to call on the name of Jesus. You had to stand on his word. And I stopped by to let you know today that if you got your sling and you got your rock anything that stands before you today you can release it and let it go and say in the name of Jesus say that you got to flee in the name of Jesus say that you got to go anything that's hindering you today I stop by to tell you give it over to God what are you saying if you don't have no obedience you're not going to let God handle it. And if you don't have no courage, you're not going to stand and let God take care of things. So what has God already promised us? He said, your riches is in glory. He told us we was a, a royal nation. We was above priesthood. We all got glory that surrounds us each and every day of our lives. I stop by to let you know that everything that's hindering you today just call on the name of Jesus and everything is going to be all right. Do I have a giant slaying here today that's standing on nothing but the word of God? I stop by to let you know that in his word is life and in his life there is liberty. I stop by to let you know that you're free today. You're free to serve him. You're free to serve God. And everything that you're going through, he's going to make it all right. Everything that's hindering you, he's going to make it all right. He's going to cause the enemies to be your footstools. I stop by to let you know that under my feet, there is some dust. And when I put my feet on the floor, the dust begins to move. So what God is telling me, you can shake it off and you can pack it under your feet. I don't know about you, but if you ever been around there, when you start packing it up, the higher it gets, I'm glad I can stand on dirt and then it make me go higher. It'll make me go higher. It'll make me go higher. I don't know about you today, but I'm going to go higher as God want me to go. It don't matter what the world say, but I'm living for Jesus. I'm not living for nobody else. Anybody living for Jesus today? Anybody is a giant slayer today? And I won't keep saying, is anybody a giant slayer? Do I have any giant slayers? Because we as Christians, we say we are until we're faced with a problem. Until we're faced with a situation. Until we're faced with brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so saying something about you that you don't like. Do you take the mind of Christ or do you take the mind of the world? Amen. We live in a society where, where people are so easy to, to get on social media and down this person and down that person. And we're not showing that we exhibit what Christ has given us. We're living more for the world than we are for our Savior. And if it wasn't for our Savior, where would we be? We would be nowhere. We would be lost. We would be like sheep accounted for the slaughter. That's why he had told us that we have to yield from the word and turn to him because he's going to direct our path. As long as he's directing our path, everything that stands in our way, it can't hinder us. We're going to be faced with things that's going to give us a challenge. But when we have the mind of Christ, only thing that challenge does is it makes you strive harder and harder to keep living for Christ. So I stop by just to tell you, there's not anything that can hinder you today. Nothing can stop you as long as you're being obedient to the word of God. As long as you have the courage to stand and know that God is going to always be with you. Amen. You will be all right. 
And the last thing, Moses, you show you have resilience. Amen. You have resilience to know that each and every day that you wake up is another day to show somebody just who your God is. Amen. And you have to be obedient and you have to have courage and you have to keep doing this each and every day of our life because Christ told us that we are kingdom builders. We have to enlarge his kingdom, amen. But too often times we don't want to talk to anybody else but the people that we see on the inside of these walls. But God has told us we have to go to the highways and to the byways to reach those who don't know it. So we all have something to do. We all have something that, that ails us. We all have a giant that we have to face. But I stop and I let you know that we know who the giant slayer is. Amen. That giant slayer is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May we stand upon our feet. Amen. Amen. Come to Jesus. Do we have one today? Come to Jesus. We have one today who wants to give their life to Christ. Come to Jesus. Jesus. Do we have one today who wants to pray for a loved one? Do we have anyone who just wants to pray for themselves? When all hope is lost, amen, we can turn to Jesus. And he will make everything all right. He will save you. He will save you. Oh, he will save you. Just now. Just now. Right now. Will there be anyone? Father, we come to you in the humblest way that we know how, saying thank you, Father. Thank you for this day, Father. And thank you for the opportunity, Father, to come out and serve you, Father. And the only way that we try and that we know how, Father, is through spirit and in truth, Father. You say, enter to the gates with thanksgiving and to us, course, with praise, Father. So we say thank you for the opportunity to praise you, Father. Thank you for the opportunity to lift your name on high, Father. Thank you for being in our lives, Father. Not just hanging around, Father, but just being there with us, Father. Knowing that we're always going to need you, Father, to go with us, Father. And being with us as we travel along these dangerous highways and byways. Father, as we go from place to place, Father, we know that you are right there by our sides, Father. So for this we say thank you, Father. There's no other person that can do the things that you do, Father. You said you, you be with the, you would hear us at any time, Father. Not just one person, Father, but the whole world, Father. So for this, we say thank you, Father. Thank you for being so omnipotent, Father. Thank you for being so ultimate, Father, that no one can do what you do, Father. You stand above all, Father, and you are all, Father, and you are in all, Father. So for this, we say thank you, Father. Bless the church, Father, and keep them always in your care, Father. Bless those who are sick, Father, and need a touch from you, Father, because you know you are the true doctor, Father, the doctor above all doctors, Father. You can go where nobody else can go, Father. You can perform the miracle that nobody else can understand, Father. And for this, we say thank you, Father. Thank you for being the God who we serve, the God who we trust, the God who we can lean on when times are tough. Because we know that you are always right by our side. When you hung out on Calvary Hill, Father, and you showed us just how much you loved us, Father. When you stretched the arms out, Father. And as we can look, Lord, Father, you said 
you will take the sins from the far as east as it is to the west, Father, and bury our sins, Father. No other person, Father, can do what you do, Father. So for this we say thank you, Father. Keep us each and every day of our lives, Father, knowing that we need you, not just today, but every day, Father. These are another blessed ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you. Thank the Lord for Reverend Curry coming out to give us that awesome word. And if when uh, if it, our minds are clear, we're gonna go home. Amen. Let's give God a praise for His word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, New Prospect, for having me today, amen. I told you I wasn't going to stay before you too long. Amen. I'm never really long-winded, amen. It's all right, amen. Once the ship takes off, I have to go and, and let it do what it do, amen. amen. Not saying I'm the best, not saying I'm the worst, but I have to do what God gave me to do, amen. 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 So may we rest upon our feet, say amen. Let everybody say Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Everybody say Now unto him who can present us faultless and keep us from falling. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen.